Riders ready, watch the gate. Hey, thanks for joining the Dirty Knobs podcast. This week, our guests are Joe Bomber and Greg Grubbs, two of our oldest pals. Uh, we all met up at Woodward Camp uh, years and years ago, and we were the first instructors, JV as well. So uh, listen, hang in there. We're going to have a little bit of a challenge with Greg's internet connection. But listen, it's worth it because we mock him and make fun of him. So if you stick around to the end, I'm going to tell you, we're going to laugh so hard. Um, please, please subscribe. Uh, that's how we tell we're doing well. That's how YouTube tells us we're doing well. And by doing so, we're going to pick uh, our subscriber to give out a box of stuff to. This week's winner is MTH MTH. So I don't know who you are, but if you could just send us an email to dirtyknobspodcast at gmail.com, we'll send you out a box of stuff. Very cool stuff. Hey, speaking of very cool stuff, check this out. Yeah. We finally got some t-shirts. Uh, we're going to sell them super cheap, super cheap. So uh, please check them out at dirtyknobspodcast.com and uh, we'll get you a t-shirt out to you. Uh, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for listening. Enjoy. I see Hollywood is prepared. Look All at the right. preparation. <laughs> you, you know when hollywood pre prepares it's called preparation h <laughs> that's what it is all i see is i see some new jerseys in the background there <laughs> the only new jersey on this podcast is jv it's james vicente right there <laughs> oh, you man. did add you did add a you did add jerseys back there he did I add did. jerseys yeah yeah i got some more going i got a few things going up there i so see he's what got you a I see what you props. did back there. I know what you did. You had a lot of Hold on. setup. You got your props. Here if I can, I'm gonna shoot the one in the corner. Is that your Woodward jacket? Yeah, I got a Woodward staff jacket. Nice. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. Uh, which is a great segue. Which <laughs> is a great <laughs> segue. Super gay. Who we are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This is going to be the hardest part of this podcast is talking to the... <laughs> Four of the funniest people I know. Mm. Oh my God, this is great. Well, uh, no, no need for introductions because J, JV will have done this prior to, so you guys know. So everyone will know who you are. Um, but what they won't know is how we all know each other uh, and how close we are. And so uh, I, I'm just going to start off by saying I'm not sure how we all first met. It doesn't matter. What matters is, <laughs> God dang, you guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious oh i uh i know that uh i don't know when i met greg and joe for the first time i do oh, Amar amarillo amarillo uh, amarillo texas probably 80 whenever saber plates were cool <laughs> that summer so you guys never met yeah so i'm still waiting, I'm no, still waiting. Uh, you guys <laughs> never met am i in the wrong meeting here <laughs> Uh, <laughs> James, I James, Saber I met plates. in June of 1983. So <laughs> that was at camp, at camp, right? at camp, absolutely. Yeah, that's when I the first when Joe and I rolled up to Woodward that night. I don't know if you were there the first week. Yeah, well, there, was. I was. I was there the first week. There, there yeah, was, was no track. Okay. There was yep. absolutely nothing. first week. Yeah. yeah, rolling rolling into that place when we did and seeing it now is just mind-blowing you you have no idea what it's like now it's incredible <laughs> it's yeah the pictures are just yeah like rolling up there that first night it was just that lone little bmx track out on the hill they had all the ground in the world and yet the track was still terrible <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, it, it was well you know in at woodward pennsylvania it at that time of the year it's still raining all the time right the weather's horrible yeah, but you remember the second straightaway went uphill. I remember that. Uphill. I remember that. I couldn't believe it. That's how we. It was exhausting, man. Just a few rock, rocks on the on the track too. Just ask David Jones. Oh yeah. yeah. By the way, uh, our our good friend David Jones, otherwise known as Biff, 
yeah. the mayor of Mechanicsburg. <laughs> uh, he will, uh, I'm sure he's going to love hearing this. Uh, I'm sure he's going to be stoked that we used his name and we'll probably end up telling a story about him before long. Oh man. Swan diving uh, into a puddle in yeah. the first turn. Yeah. I know that, uh, I do want to know that, uh, so the, the three of us, Joe, Greg, and, uh, and myself, along with the fourth, uh, Mike, Polson, Mike, yep. Mike Polson. We were the first guys, uh, to be counselors at Woodward camp, the BMX. Camp. Forget, don't forget. And, little Corp. And, yeah, uh, but that wasn't until later in the summer. And no. it came in later. In the, it, the first four were us four. And, uh, I know it changed my life. I yes. know it, I know it changed James' life. Yeah. And, that, and I know that I did my best to ruin Eric's life. So. <laughs> <laughs> and it shows. Success. Yeah. Success <laughs> achieved. <laughs> Completely 100% corrupted. Did you go up there and teach Eric? I never, I never taught. Uh, I was just a guest. Um, <laughs> a guest? Yeah, I was just a guest. I was a the, visitor. Yeah, I was a visitor. So I just never, um, I never got really invited to teach. I think I was too young to teach um, when I was a guest. And then um, the, the staff had shifted out. And I, so I never was really invited to be a guest. I, but I spent a, a fair bit of time up there um, writing. And uh, Schwinn, I know when I wrote for Schwinn, they had me out there for a week. And then um, I was there, obviously, with Hutch and CW. Uh, um, JV and Mike and I have, have, were talking about different stories of, about that, but yeah, man, it was, I remember going there the first time and thinking the same thing as you were talking about the track. I was like, good God, this place sucks, man. This track is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> What's all the hype about, man? They have but all got, this, all this yeah. money and they can't, the track was, yeah. The starting gate in 83 was, you know, a good Wasn't bad. starting gate. Yeah. But for the land they had for you know you could have had anything you wanted and it was just rocks <laughs> yeah but especially after you with like you said greg with all the land that they had and, and the, the property um and then you race other tracks back east uh, nbl tracks you know like louisville or nashville or south park and and you see what is capable of i mean i'm a so cowboy so I was blown away when I got to race those tracks. So I thought, well, wow, Woodward, you know, it's going to be in the hills of Pennsylvania. This is going to be amazing. It was just. You'd have to fight the Amish for their land, though. That's the problem. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You'd have to go take them down their horses and everything in the field. <laughs> who designed? I don't know who designed or built Yeah, who designed it? Polson? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, Polson. Somebody? Like, no. <laughs> yeah, it was Mike. Paul <laughs> Gosnell. <laughs> no, it was. It was it was somebody from one. John it was Chapman the track track operator that first year. What do you mean they, they drove from York or something like that? I, I can. Oh, not Spanky's parents no. from York. Could it be the Swartz? Swartz, that's it. Oh, that is exactly it. They built it. Good one, Mike. Oh, wow. We had to dig deep. Yeah, Good one. I, I think Swartz. we're. Th I think we're throwing Grandpa Joe under the bus now. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> had a, had a oh, elderly man. moment there. What an absolute great BMX family. You know, did, and they started the Leukemia Race for Life at their track. That's where that started. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Oh, yeah, man. I, I remember that. I great, didn't know that. Yeah, I did not know great, that. Great, great BMX family. Um, just piss poor track designer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back, Mike. I think did I meet you in eighty one? Fremont, were you at that race? Yep, Fremont. Seriously, it's going in and out. I think yeah. Fremont eighty one. And Eric, I don't know. You were one of those kids that I somehow knew, but didn't know. You know, you're probably what four or five years younger than us. Yeah, you guys were idols of mine, man. I mean, that's that's how. I mean, it was just you guys were magazine guys and pro guys, and and you guys were just. You guys are guys that I looked up to, man, and was just aspiring to be, you know, um, I would always hear all the stories and, and obviously with Mike living in SoCal, I got to talk with him a little bit more frequent, but yeah, I mean, it was, um, I'm just, you know, I'm 52 now, so I'm just a couple of years younger than you guys, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was awesome watching you guys race and battle. And, you know, um, I think I remember Joe, the first time I remember Joe, I think was at Chandler when he was, when he was racing. Um, yeah. Cause you were, I, you were, you were, I think you were privateer at the time I was, and, and you were mixing it up with some of the 
some of the fastest guys. And I'm thinking, who is this guy, man? This guy's hauling. So, and then Greg, you had your magazine covers and stuff. And obviously when you got on red line, I mean, it was all over everywhere. So, but yeah, I taught you guys were just guys, idols of mine, man, as I was growing up. So it's pretty cool to, to get, you know, see you guys in person and stuff. You so need, cool. You need better idols. And you didn't hit your, <laughs> no. did you, did you well, hit your head a few times? I mean, my, <laughs> my, my main, my, my, my main idol Hollywood over here, man. He, he, he threw me in the lane of, of, of the type of guys that I was idolizing, man. <laughs> so. he, he pointed you towards us. Exactly, well, man. These guys well, are going somewhere. I yeah, was a moth to the flame. Yeah. These guys are going somewhere. These guys <laughs> got it. They got it going yeah. on. We well, were, well, these guys are future dirty knobs. That's right, <laughs> right, exactly. Go, oh, hey, going back, just because I don't know if EC actually knows the story, but the first week of Woodward, that we started touching on it, but I don't think I don't think a lot of people know that the first week of Woodward, we didn't even ride our bikes because it rained every day. Absolutely, you guys can, remember that? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. And and they and EC, you know what the instruction was. I, I, it was made up it was wake up hey mike do you I know, mike? It. I know it it was Wednesday, Isabel, one o'clock the, the gymnast how- taught us how to do the three point how to do the roll the three-point roll when you had <laughs> to fall how to fall <laughs> properly that's right the gym, running jumping over foam landing on your you know you didn't land on your your arm your back and then your butt. pizza elbow yeah like we're gonna be able to, to do that while we're yeah. You know, now it's, he's it's used there. to teaching gymnasts and you get a bunch of BMXers in there. Oh, it was like, it was just a bunch of challenged young men what a, themselves onto the phone. What a crazy hurdle to have to get over though, man. Imagine, uh, I mean, I can't imagine you guys taking money for kids to come to summer camp and then it's summer camp for bikes and, and there's nothing and it rained and you yeah, can't ride. Yeah. Do you remember we, we had we had asked we would we gave him like an hour for question and answer time? That was Wednesday that? at one o'clock. Yeah, and, Wednesday and, at one o'clock. And you want to talk about just absolutely fucking dying? That like three <laughs> questions and then just crickets. Like they just stare at you. <laughs> so the so the setup was the pros would go in the front of the room and they set the chairs. We up had nothing to say. What kind of valve caps do you put on your inner tube? <laughs> oh my gosh! And everyone would be facing them. Remember that one time. That was cool. <laughs> yeah, was like, yeah. Remember, remember that one time you just yeah. stared at us though, and it was just dead silent after about five minutes. Just okay. okay. Now what okay. can we do? Yeah. Go, go to the photo lab. <laughs> <laughs> who wants um, to do some? Who wants to do some more stretching? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> How about, how about we go into how about we go into the foam pits and get screamed at by the gymnasts? Okay, <laughs> sure. Let's talk about Jason Goldstein and what we did to him when he wouldn't wake up in the morning. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah. Well, we 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 were in stretching right the, the <laughs> dance hall right next to where we we everybody slept and we decided to send some people over to go wake him up and they brought him out and his tidy whities threw him into that little pond God. and all oh. the gymnast girls were we were leaving stretching and all the young gymnast girls were going into the dance hall and saw it and, and he was so upset he <laughs> yeah just absolutely well, uh, i love it you know oh, i was it was brutal oh, in his tidy whities in front Miranda of was the leader of all the shenanigans and yet who got the shit stick me <laughs> <That's rough. laughs> Mid- midnight olympics <laughs> By Mikey, the way, he, was, he Miranda was the stealth tr- troublemaker. I, he, I I can't even believe the shit you got away with. And Iron somehow. Fist Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I he remember was. one. I remember one night talking uh, Ed Isabel's son Louie into shooting all the frogs <laughs> in the pond, <laughs> and he did. <laughs> he did. And then and he then then stapled them to the to the <laughs> side of the rail. <laughs> He gave him a stapler and had him staple all the frogs on the rail outside the cabins. Oh my! And I thought, trophy. He, you know, I thought he'd shoot yeah, like exactly. two or three. He had like thirty of them. And oh different si- different sizes, and all the guts and stuff were coming out of the mouth the next morning. It was, and he loved it. <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay, uh, okay. So how about when Miranda threw my shoes in that pond? The only pair I, I had at the camp because they stunk so. 
They, he decided they stunk bad enough that they had to go. He hucks <laughs> my shoes in there. We're in the middle of Pennsylvania. I don't have any other shoes. You wrote, <laughs> you wrote, you wrote for Jag. You could have got those jocks, for, Jags. I, you could have had 20 pair of them there, but you had to they were the jocks, same Jag. No, Rennie was, a, let's get it. Okay, Rennie's a whole other chapter. <laughs> but, I, but I got one pair of shoes and that was it. But anyway, so I wake up, my shoes are out in this fucking pond. Can I cuss? Because I cuss. I mean, yes. that's what I did. <laughs> yes. Is that why? <laughs> and so I steal. I well, issues. don't steal technically, but this kid, Goldstein, I borrowed an, a, a set of vans from him and never gave them back to him. And the, I saw the kid a year later and he was still busted by chops about owing him a pair of vans. Oh my God. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, Sorry about that, kid. I'll get right on it. Never and knowing <laughs> you, you were still wearing them and they smelled super bad. So. Yeah, that could be. Right? I, I, I'm surprised that the fish didn't die and come up to the top of the water. <laughs> Those <laughs> same shoes. Those so same bad. shoes. Jeff Osma's dad tried to wash them a couple of weeks earlier in Houston. And, yeah. and he set them outside because the whole house smelled so bad. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh my so God. He could have got a pair of shoes then. Yeah, he, yeah, he didn't like me for that. <laughs> Speaking of Redline and uh, and Jocks Jag, do do either one of those companies owe you money, Greg? Both. <laughs> Man, that's a swear to God. Every more, company more I more than ever Hyper for owes me money. Ooh, Hyper does. Hyper owed me a lot of money. Yeah. Hey, Rennie, speak- every single check of Rennie's. Rennie owes me money. Every check of Rennie's, whether it was a, a paycheck or that we would use me and goss just that summer remember i only rode for jag through half the summer i don't know if you guys remember that but uh so we'd go to you know how we'd leave camp and go to a race well the track operator from the week before would walk up to me and go hey your check bounce you know, I, 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 <laughs> talk to ready and then it happened every week oh <laughs> man every single week and then he tell you, oh, not, not everyone realizes how glamorous it was to be a BMX was pro. A night <laughs> dealing with him. Now, uh, he, I, my mom took I mean, him to the Better B- Business Bureau because he bounced a check to me, and she was so <laughs> mad. She's like, "I'm going to get that Randy Roker." Really? Yeah, she never did, but yeah, she did. She she filed charges on him with the Better Business Bureau. How many people was she in line behind? Two hundred? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't I think remember. anybody caught up to Rennie. No, he's still running. <laughs> yeah, I remember I Greg Hill supposedly race. caught up to him. Yeah, I remember they had a race at the Silver Dome in in Pontiac, Michigan. Yep. It was a one time, you know, IBM X race, and the guy that put it on did the same thing. He, all the pros checks bounced. And just by chance on Monday in town, Clarence Perry caught the guy. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refute that just a hair because I won that race, B pro anyway. And, and my, my check, and my I got check my didn't, money. My check didn't bounce either, but I was like, I, maybe we got to the bank quicker than others. Yeah, Cl- Clarence's did. I remember Clarence catching it. Uh, it was a big deal. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. I actually did win that race. Sorry, Joe. I, I know you won. did. I, it took you exactly <laughs> 15 minutes to start bragging. <laughs> I took I took the unders and I won. <laughs> so I knew that was coming. No, I, Eric, only you have the, no idea how only the races Greg where I got to beat him. Okay, I love so, it. Yeah, oh, well, it could get ugly quick. No, no. Oh, listen, yeah. listen Mike, to why Mike I say this James because know. about two months, before, dude. Two months before the NBL Grands, the first time we ever raced the NBL, he had lane one. No, I didn't. I had lane five. It's in video. And I, they called Whatever. us back. I pulled the whole shot. They call us back because of something. Lane eight. We go again and, and I, still, I beat you again. I still got, I still got second. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, you were in lane eight. I was in lane five. I had the best, best position. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. It's on video somewhere. <laughs> so Mike's like, shut so, up. <laughs> <laughs> you knew this had happened <laughs> 40 years later two, two years of this stuff <laughs> I, swear, I swear to god i have to call my psychiatrist when I'm done. <laughs> mike absolutely said we cannot do this podcast 
if both of them don't come on. Yeah. Now I know why. And I was going to okay. suggest we do it separate because of this. <laughs> now I know why. I, I swear that. to God, we argued about BMX so much. I think it cost you your second marriage, Joe. I swear. Probably. I'm <laughs> sitting so in her house right hearing, now. So she was so sick of hearing the time I left him at a race in South Park. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, my God. Was was that the race, Joe, that you had that big boil on your ass? No, that was that was a couple of years later. Oh. <laughs> no, it was a race that I was nobody had beat Tommy Brackens that weekend, and I did beat him in the for like five weeks straight. And I beat him in a semi at North Park, not South Park. North Park was Sunday. But that's not the same year. That's actually an eighty that's an eighty-three. We we almost went to blows on the way back to the camp. We pulled over and we were going to fight each other, literally. You and Greg. Because he left me at the hotel. Yeah. Why, why well, did you leave him at the option. hotel? Okay. okay. I gave him the option. We're going to pull over and fight, or I'm taking you to the Johnstown bus station. And I, we did. Do. And we pulled into the bus station parking lot. <laughs> and we did. We nearly went to blows. Yeah. It was, which, which one do you want to do? It was, we were pretty calm about it. Like, okay, let's, you want to, it's, it's fight? Yeah. All right. Fight. <laughs> yeah. Go get a ride with Gosrow. Yeah, dude. No one was there. Anyway, I how'd you get that. to how'd you get to the track? I didn't. I stayed. At, I stayed at the hotel all day. And he came back, and everybody for uh, weeks was like, "I can't believe Grubs would do that." <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you, I got look at, that head you can tell secretly Joe's like, I got the best out of that because yeah. Grubbs was roasted all day. No. I, I'm absolutely. good for missing one national if Grubbs gets roasted all week. And he, for, for weeks, for weeks it happened. See? See? The Pattersons, John Cruz, they, oh, Tommy Brackens, people come up. I can't believe you. I swear do that. on uh, my life, I told Gosser, I said, Will you give Bomber a ride to the track? And he went, Yeah. Yeah, but so he I was, drove there was... to the track, and then Gosrow shows up, and I just stare at him. I go, "Dude, wh where's Bomber? Oh, I didn't see him." And, <laughs> and I where... just there, and I thought for sure, like, okay, any minute Joe's gonna somehow be pulling up to the track. It's like South Park, like you said, Eric. It's one of the biggest races of the year. It's it's a nice. I'm like, okay, he's still not here. Okay, he's missed practice. And where we stayed okay, was, was at least a hundred dollar cab ride. It was a good forty five minutes away. So I'm like, so, eh, I'm just going to take a day off I at the Sheridan. When I got back to the hotel and I was right, he was upset. Sure. Well, who, yeah. But anyway. I don't know why we didn't fight right. All right, we digress. Let me dial oh, my, no. let me dial my therapist. He said, oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Man, uh, is, there's anybody no gonna is anybody going to find this interesting, though? Why are we doing this? No, James, I love James, it. You, I do. You, you've road tripped with us to, to Georgia yeah. that time, and, and you know exactly this goes on over and over for hours. Every time I, we get together, this goes on. I was telling those guys we almost ran out of gas when we were, yes. we were driving down there, and I remember... <laughs> I guess, I think, Greg, you were the one driving, but you were like petting the top of the car. Come on, we can do it. We can do it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> the you guys yelled at classic. me for the way I drove a little bit. Like, stop pressing on the gas so hard. You know, be steady. Be steady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but oh, you were, James, you were, you had just started driving. I mean, you weren't, you know, you were a young pup. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I think I just got my license. I year. think you had. I think so. That was a good yep. road trip. Ronnie yeah. missed his. Ronnie couldn't sign up. And remember that sitting on. He was out front, and he. he I couldn't believe that he he couldn't sign up and get to race. I was absolutely. But anyway, I digress. Crazy yeah. Ronnie. Uh, yeah, crazy Ronnie. Crazy uh, in, Ronnie. And uh, didn't sign up. Uh. -uh. No, no, the, the NBL did that to me too. They. It, Spanky Campbell was supposed to sign us up. So he was late. And so they, yep. as an amateur, they let Spanky race, but as a pro, they didn't let me race. And I just stared at that chick. I go, you, you're kidding me. I go, I'm from Nebraska. Okay. I've come a long way to Florida. She was like, I'm so, you know, and I didn't, I didn't blow a gasket. And she goes, oh, we'll, right. let you race, we'll let you race pro open. Okay. So, and Joe, here comes the brag. I was oh, on. Pro open. 
Okay. Dude, I did, but she was the chick <laughs> at the finish line and I crossed the finish line and she was like, you know, basically like, I'm so glad you won, you know, cause I hated doing that to you, blah, blah, blah. And I just- you I punch her? <laughs> no, that was from the hotel. <laughs> now, why are you guys cheering when I brag? Cause you knew- Did, I was, get, you, got, did you, you get her dick. number? What a bunch of dicks. <laughs> I love it. I, I cause I love it. Yeah. I don't get the point. I don't get the point that they let you race pro open, but not the no points. Oh, no points. Yeah, no points. No points. I get That's it. right. I got you. Yeah. And rules are rules. Yeah, the, like they were. I mean, they were harsh about it. She was just like, no, nope, no pro, no pro money. I was just, you know, again, I throw uh, the Nebraska card at her. I mean, technically, I was from Woodward, but I was like, I'm from Nebraska. You know, it's a long ways away. <laughs> Remember riding by the the buggies back then, and you're like, wow, I'm on like a seven hundred dollar BMX bike, and these guys literally have a horse and buggy. I mean, the Amish were. <laughs> That, Make good I chocolate time, chip cookies. I remember one time specifically in those first couple of weeks being on the starting gate and remember the field to your left, there was a, there was an Amish guy out there, old school, or, you know, late, late 18th century or eight, 19th century. One, he was, had a horse and a plow, like a manual one lane plow, plow on that land. Absolutely. And that was a giant plot of land next to him. I'm sure Woodward owns all now, but it, they do. I remember just going. If you if you go wow, and I, you look at a if you look at a Google Earth picture of Camp Bell, oh. it's a good there thing Greg's go. garbage. Oh, I'm losing you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, was, I, was I knew you guys would do this to me. Yeah. No, dude. We love you. you. You are a source of no. Great I'm gonna shut, no, I'm gonna shut up. No. no, I'm done, man. No, I have, I, I do have a couple questions for you, Greg, specifically. All right. One, shoot. who who do you think is the most hmm, accomplished camper that came out of Woodward oh, Camp? That's yeah, a good man. question. Ooh. Uh, yeah, yeah, but he was only there for a year. That's right. Well, who do you say? Gotta, who do you think? Let's let him come yeah, back to life for a minute. Talking about Joe DeSena? Oh God, am I freezing? Oh you? my God, you froze, but you got you did you did come up you, with the name. Who, who do you think it is? Boot Camp DeSena. Is it? Don't make me say Joe DeSena. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, oh so for, yeah. The, for the people that are listening that didn't go to Woodward Camp the first year the entire first year uh explain who uh somebody explain who joe DeSena is the new yorker well, new yorker James, yeah I you know that he's that. are you talking greg camper from James new york his friend no nah, no he I wasn't mean, not he was be, he was kind to him he was not yeah, his friend, friend yeah. james come on he's your friend yeah, james yeah. james, james <laughs> is very very kind to him let's put it that way he i don't know was, he's the most uh, the I mean, we're most accomplished in what? I mean, wasn't Matt Hoffman a teacher at one time? Weren't there no, some? No, no. But I mean, as a camper, who, who, who? Oh, overall. Overall, as yes. a camper, who came out, uh, you know, and did something in their life, you know, that y you may know of or, or accomplished something big or has something to show for it at the end here? I mean, we're just knucklehead, dirty knobs. So I'm talking about, and, and, and Joe DeSena was certainly one of them. Yeah. If not, as the you, as you might to remember. I was not asked to come back to Woodward after 83. <laughs> Why? Why was that? I don't know. Dude, <laughs> because Miranda would walk around and put that fake halo above his head. Him and Polson both. Okay. Just so everybody's clear. Him and Pol Polson, seriously, just fake. I mean, just the biggest two phonies you've ever met in your whole fucking life. And every time something happened, there was Grubbs, the, the privateer, the guy that got kicked off red line. I'm like, what, me? And somehow, magically, the owner didn't like me. No, like, not, nothing about an attitude or anything. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, so when the campers were homesick, your job was to like tell them to like hang in there. And I would sit there and go, dude, I hate this place. I'm not going to go home. <laughs> You're like i'm with you okay yeah. that was my biggest sin was like like yeah i didn't counsel him into stay and i counseled him like yeah this place sucks don't come back yeah hey can you give me a ride 
<laughs> Can you be a ride to the airport? Yeah. By the way, your mom's kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> How far is State College? Just give me a ride to State College. There's an airport. I'll leave. In fact, I did leave one week, and they hate that was that was what really made them mad. I got homesick, and I went home for a week between races. <laughs> Web. And I, I just thought it was sort of, I, th I didn't think it was mandatory to be there every week. I really didn't. I swear to God. I was just like, well, they were paying us, but I didn't know we had to stay every week. So I went home <laughs> between St. Louis and Ohio, where Joe DeSena made his famous. We road tripped with him. Yeah. Yeah. And he wore, he wore Polson's helmet, brand new bell helmet, because he forgot his at the camp and he wrecked and he scratched the whole side. Oh, of it. Wow. I forgot and about Pol that. Polson was like, Dude, that was my new helmet. <laughs> he was so bummed. Well, Mike, so you, bummed. Gotta, you guys have got to tell everybody who Joe DeSena, if you watch Supercross now, at, right after Supercross is a show called whatever his show's name is. Something boot he's camp a, or Spartan. Don't Spartan. Spartan. Yeah, yeah, Spartan. Yeah. Right. It's it's uh it's Woodward 2.0. He literally lip, ripped off Woodward. I mean, you know. Well, he, my, well, we were talking about it the other day, and he you know, he ripped off he, he ripped off your guys's Woodward. He ripped off the night the night games. <laughs> he ripped right, off basically. night games Woodward is what he the ripped mid, off. Midnight Olympics. <laughs> midnight Olympics. Midnight exactly. Olympics, man. Yeah, I got about There's nothing 10 better than that. I don't know. Was it like two weeks ago? I texted Joe. I go, dude, are you watching this? I, have you watched an episode? And he's like, I'm not home. And I just wrote him back like. Why aren't you home? Like, like <laughs> dickhead, be home and watch this. Because yeah, you got to watch this camper. I mean, he acts like, I don't know, man. His whole, the, the most infuriating thing is it's on CNBC. And he's like, I'm a self-made millionaire. No, you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not bitter or anything, are you, Greg? No, no I love the no. kid. I, I love the kid. He's a good kid. He was there the whole summer. His parents dropped him off like. You know, yeah, he was there. Camp. He was there a while. A while. Yeah. No, the whole summer. They the signed whole him summer. Up for the entire summer. Wow. The one, and the other little kid from California that ended up doing gymnastics too. Richie, I think his name was. Yeah. Yeah. No, but one you, year. Got, you got to throw Billy Farrell into the mix as far as the. Oh gosh, I, yeah. That oh, I, know. I mean, yeah. I mean, Billy. Billy had hyper when he came to the camp. Yeah. You know, it was a wasn't it was a high school project, wasn't it? Yeah, he went to a really, I mean, he came out of high school smarter than I walked out of college. I mean, his his high school is called the Dalton School, which is insanely prestigious in New York City. And so, yeah, for a high school project, he founded and started Hyper at 17. And the wow. weird thing, the weird thing, remember he, before we did the, he had little maybe quarter page or half page ads in the mags. Do you remember that in the spring of 81? Yeah. And I was like, who the hell is 17 year old Billy Farrell? I'd never seen, I'd never heard of him. So between my free agent, original free agent, by the way, th th thanks, Joe. Yes, that's right. <laughs> between that and Jag, he called me in Nebraska and wanted, you know, and all he was willing to offer was like a, a jersey and a bike. And I basically said, you know, you kind of got to come with more than that if you're going to. Because I'm grubs. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, I mean, he, he, he yeah, with sneakers too. <laughs> uh, please, <laughs> one pair. You know, if, if they would have just had like Febreze back then, I would have been okay. It wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked. <laughs> it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> it wouldn't have worked. Now we went. I hated, I hated socks then. I couldn't. I raced without <laughs> socks. I'm, now we went and stayed at Billy's house, Mike. Remember? Yeah, of course. We had a ball, man. Had a His mom would do our laundry for us. But so anyway, um, somewhere right there in the middle of the summer, he came to the camp and basically pitched me on riding for Hyper and said his dad was fairly famous guy, Ron Dante, his stepdad, I'm sorry, was a fairly famous guy named Ron Dante, who was actually the lead singer of the Archies. And he produced, wow. he was a record producer. Barry Manilow. He produced Barry Manilow, Irene Cara. Wow. Kara, wow. Um, yeah. I mean, big, you know, seven, like all the gold records were on the wall. At least 20 uh, Barry Manilow records. Amazing. He, and he was a jingle writer. I think he actually came up with, uh, I'd like to buy the world a Coke. I think that oh was. Oh, my. Dude. Get out of here. Dude. No, no, was, the guy, seriously. The guy was just, he still performs Ron Dante. And so. Wow. Joe, so he's like, come to New York, you know, and, 
and meet Ron and we'll talk about like a full sponsorship. Okay. Like, all right. So me and Joe and Billy actually went to New York city that first weekend. I'd never been to New York city. Oh so I'm gosh. like, so like, I was like, okay, we're going through Harlem. And he's like, no, we're not. I go, yeah, we've got that Caprice. And we've got all three bikes in the back, you know, you, where you, you, know, you, you tied it Bungie off. The, you could see bikes. Yeah, and I made trunk. him, you know, interstate 80 goes to New York city. And he's like, just please go around, you know, the East side highway and get off on the upper East side. And I'm like, no, we're going through Harlem. And we got off and, you know, it's, it might be gentrified now, but in 83, Harlem was still Harlem. Wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He was terrified as a native, as a native New Yorker. He was like, "Please don't do this." We're like, "Yeah." James, you probably only made one trip there in oh, that during man. that time, if even. Brother, but, it's still scary now. So, <laughs> but 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 hey, but imagine you know those guys from from like from the Bronx. We talked about it. Uh, EC Mike yep. talked about it. Those guys wrote, would ride their bikes through there to get yep. to Braddock. To get to and across the George Washington Bridge, yeah, so, yeah, imagine and, that, and Those have to fight riding... going over and back, right? Yeah, that's, that's crazy, insane, absolutely oh, wow. insane. Yeah, I was always impressed. Yeah, all... that was the first time I. Go ahead, Greg. No, no, I go ahead, Mikey. I, I was uh, always impressed that Billy Farrell was able to do. You know, came from a high school project that I can start a bike company and did, and uh, and you know to to where it is now. You know, it, it's a uh, huge company that makes you know bicycles that are sold all, in every walmart I mean, it's a multi-million dollar company but uh you know it's gone gone from the meager beginnings of an idea of a camper he was he was beyond smart like so there I, his dad has a picture of him going out to meet boris dixon in early 81 and there's a picture of him like, <laughs> I can't keep a straight face. <laughs> Great. Just made that for him. What? What am I doing? Did you? V- so okay. VDC I, I made that bike. God. VDC what? made the bike. VDC yeah. made the first batch. Yep. That's how about, amazing. How about the picture of the ad? It's him crossing up, and we're like, God, this kid knows how to jump. He's no. laying on his back. No. Yeah, like, look at his shoelaces. <laughs> He's on his back. Yeah. I got screamed at. Okay, so his real dad is a fine art photographer, like an like an Oz type of guy. And he so, so the secret back then was you couldn't take a studio shot without having, I guess, having it all blurred out. So he put him on his back. And Guyverson called me up and was like, So how did you know how did you guys get, get that? And I told him. And when Billy's dad found out, I told him some trade secret. Oh my God! Again, there's Grubs. The dead. Off the team. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Off the team. See ya. Oh uh, my God! He was so pissed at me. He just screamed at me like, "Don't!" You know, I'm, I can never win, man. <laughs> <laughs> you won a lot. You won a lot. No, no. I'm just saying. Like somehow, I always put my foot in my mouth. You know, I thought I thought he'd be impressed. Like, hey, they're gonna. They actually did they actually put a little blurb in it in BMX action about how it was done. You know, to me, I didn't, I didn't think it was any big deal, but yeah, his, his real dad did the brochures and, and uh, just, yeah, Billy was in, you know, because Billy, years. Billy couldn't jump. No, Billy no. couldn't ride. Yeah. No, he no. Couldn't ride. Know, look at this guy. <laughs> Billy was yeah. scary. To, Billy was scary to watch on a track. And he'd, he'd, he'd always say, come, come watch my moto. I, I think I'm really riding good today. And Beckering would be like, no, we're not going to go watch. We're not going to watch you. <laughs> I mean, okay. So he's my sponsor and a guy I love like a brother, like in yeah, he's a great guy. I was my great brother. kid. Yeah. So like maybe 84, 85, Joe, do you remember when we were at the world cup and we were busting? Yeah, that's job? exact. That's exactly what I'm thinking. That we Willie Hubner was setting faster lap times than him. And he just, <laughs> and oh he was, but he was, he you know, like, he was, he was a <laughs> And that's what he wrote. We're gonna he did. Like, okay, so he, we're know, gonna take up a like collection so Greg can get some bandwidth. Jump, you just <laughs> your head and pray, break every bone. And when he went through turn. <laughs> 
<laughs> is it bad? It's horrible. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry, but buddy. Your, but your face looks much clearer. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. Your enhanced face is perfect. And you see, when you quit, when you finally quit talking, it looks good. Though. <laughs> I get it. No, I'm oh, just... man. So good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Have you, ever, have you ever watched guys in the Tour de France go around a corner and have their, their inside pedal down? And you think, how can you possibly be that moronic? Be that, yeah. yeah. Two inches until you. That's how Billy went through every turn. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, please, dude, don't do that. <laughs> I always. I, oh boy. Yep. Okay. Hollywood look, said, look, yep. Look, 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 looking at my Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, I was it, astonished at. The first time I watched Jeff Ruiner from Redline ride, you know when he he when he would jump, he would put one pedal up, one pedal down. Hey, wait. shut up! Yeah. Absolutely, he did. Oh, uh, you bet. The first time I saw it, I thought, oh, he must have slipped a pedal or something. And then I yeah. kept watching pro practice, and I was like, oh my gosh, this guy, this this guy jumps with his pedal straight up and down. That is nuts. I, I've never seen anyone else do it. Yeah, I'm just trying to even imagine it. Why would? It? Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Why would? It? I have no idea, but he does it every single time. Wow. Yeah, that he guy was. Very, was a, he was yeah, successful. A, yeah, a very amazing athlete. I mean, he would. He played football in Oklahoma in high school, and it was, as you know, it's a big deal. And uh, he would then he'd catch the last flight out and he'd come back to the races on Saturday. And he's by Sunday, he was all bruised up from football, but he was like an uh, an all state, you know, all state phenomenon of a running scholarship to USC. Yeah. Wow. Jeff was good people, is good people, is good people. Yeah. Midwesterner. Look, Mike, you're under six foot tall. There, There were no all those guys were just linebackers on bikes back then. Yeah, certainly. So you now the Patterson, well, were, him, Toby, were Sean, Texas. Oh, oh man. Gosh. I mean, seriously, they were just, they were like, they were like college linebackers on bikes that thank God the tracks were easy. Oh yeah. my gosh. That was the, I don't know. Is that me? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> most, most likely. <laughs> Let's just say yes. Yes. I knew this. Was <laughs> like, his you know data what, just ran out. You know what happened? You know what happened, Greg? It was no, actually it Hollywood, just, but that's him blaming just, you again for shit so that he doesn't get in trouble. Right. Oh man. My whole every every time my whole BMX career was that. Like somehow I was I was the kid, like the last one holding the bag, like he did it. Well, yep. <laughs> hey J V and EC will tell you it's still like that. Oh, I swear, dude. man, you are a yeah. stealth. You are a stealth troublemaker. He's a deck stacker. Oh, yeah. He, He's a deck yeah. stacker. That's what he, he is. is. I, I, Absolute I, trouble. Totally. And, and Pol- <laughs> without a like, doubt. Colson had that reputation as a nice Mormon kid, you know. He, he wasn't hey, he wasn't as no, bad as Mike. No, we Colson, are. Colson I, was the meanest. I mean, Miranda was the meanest to the campers, and yet somehow I got the blame. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of mean to the campers, I'm going to tell. Uh, I went on Google Earth and looked at the uh, picture of Woodward Camp, and we were laughing the other day. We were talking about the Midnight Olympics and making the kids run in and out of the trees and, and over. straddle jump them, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. In their tidy whities Yeah. <laughs> Well, those trees are about 35 feet tall now. Whoa. <laughs> and I'm sure there's there's oh, probably man. some cotton <laughs> DNA stuck in it. <laughs> and Eric, the grass was wet. We'd make them roll in it and everything. This is it. You know, if they wouldn't go to sleep and be quiet, we, we would sit outside of the bunks and just, oh, all right, I've, line up, I've, guys. Every one of you, Midnight Olympics. I've heard of man. I've heard the oh, stories. I it, know guys that did them. Didn't did Deluski do Midnight Olympics? Absolutely. Oh, Pete, for sure. Pete uh, Deluski. Okay. How about how about how we tortured Robbie Morales? Okay, there's a camper that went on to do great. Like, let's not yeah, forget about absolutely. Robbo. I didn't get to okay. give my two bits. So Robbo was a little heavy then. 
Remember that night we came back from town? We got Robbo out and we do that squat up against the wall. Where you're burning, yes. And I ate that hoagie. <laughs> and, he goes, and he goes, Is that got onions on it? I don't even like onions. I wouldn't eat it. It's, yeah, I don't even would. care. I don't even care. You can eat all you want. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, because it had onions uh, on it. Poor I Robbo. love it. Poor Robbo. Yeah, we had to exercise and we were making. Eat. Hey, I have a, I have a, I have a letter. I would from... say racing was the guy. I mean, for my, my job was a great, you know, he went in he could jump, pro man. career. Yeah. So that first year after Woodward, his mom wrote me a letter I mean, and said, I don't know how you got through to him. And somehow I admit, <laughs> I'm like, I must have been a bad influence or something, but I still have it. I still have the letter. She wrote wow. me. I couldn't believe it. it. And I was going through some stuff and I'm like, this is from Robbie's mom. That's amazing, man. That and is his, his dad yeah. was great. They were great. People, oh, they, were man. Great. they came into New York. I went to a race in 83 or four in, in like Connecticut and they lived in what, New Jersey? Uh, New York, Long they Island. Long Island. And they gave their like, oh yeah, we're going. And th they gave me a ride. Billy couldn't have lived any further into New York City than you could. 72nd and between dead end into the, into the wall by the river. And in a she van was down so by the mad river. At me for having to go that far into New York City that she was um, like basically like never coming to get you again. I was like, okay, great, cool. <laughs> No, his dad would always offer us beers. You want a beer? You, you need a beer? You want a beer? No, we're racing. We're yeah, in between I motors. Guess, I'm like, I guess, I up, I'm not really going to have that Budweiser with you, but later. It's yeah. the, the blue chest. cooler. Yeah. Yes. yes, yes, exactly. See? The blue cooler. The blue, the cooler. blue cooler, man. It was, and that was like the fifth place in your semi consolation. Dude, right. the, blue, the blue cooler could make the Hall of Fame. Yeah, it's, it's a good piece. It should be in Tulsa in the New York. Absolutely. New York Seriously. <laughs> he would Rob his dad would go, you know, in that accent, you want to be you want to well, be well, I got a semi coming up later. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep it in the cooler for you. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh man, that was great times. Those guys uh, and Rob, yeah, you're right. And Robbie Morales from Colt Bicycles has Went from camper to uh, to I mean a big deal in the bike industry. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean at the, you know, at the time, I mean you know Robbie was one of the, he did I didn't think he you know he didn't seem like he was fast but you know he was kind of overweight and he, I didn't think I didn't think any of those particularly. Well, I mean I had a bus on him, Robbo. If you're listening, <laughs> it's a good thing that you're 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 bouncing all over the place. <laughs> 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 Grover, the reason we're laughing so hard is because we talked to Robbie last week. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we we were we were busting on the baby naga the whole time. <laughs> the baby naga. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And you know awesome. what, you know what we funny. you know what we found out asshole. <laughs> uh, all these years, all these years, we call him the baby naga. It was a, it was a a name that the New York guys gave him. Right. Do you know what the baby Naga is? Some Joe, sort do you know beach, you're like some sort of a huge whale? I don't have no oh, idea. What? It's it's Godzilla's kid, the little <laughs> you know that, with the big eye. You know that what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The baby Naga. That's yeah. baby Naga. <laughs> nice. nice. We didn't know for the longest time how they came up with that name, but it makes total sense now. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, since I was only there for 83, did any other campers come out as fast pros that I don't remember? I mean, you guys were there through, I what, know. 87? I was going to say James here and and Robbie would be my my top guys to come from right. Woodward. There's a, there's others. I mean. I'm sure there are. Yeah. Uh, trying to think. Pete. I can't. I can't. Th uh, chicken head. <laughs> Yeah, Jive and Ivan. Jive and Ivan. Jive and Ivan, yes. Yeah. Sexual chocolate. Sexual chocolate. <laughs> Paul Thompson. Yeah. 
Absolutely. <laughs> all these fast kids, bro. Yeah, all these fast kids. Spanky, Romeo. Spanky from York. We went. And he was. Yeah. He was pretty good, actually. He was That's... the second fastest Spanky. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The praying mantis was the fastest. He had the. <laughs> Yeah, Dave, Dave Campbell did have the praying mantis style when he raced. Yeah, his oh. wrists were way down here. <laughs> so bad. He had that pretty mantis. They were so bad. When you see those riders too, man, you just shake your head. Like, and he, what in the hell is this? All he needed, all he needed was his prank straight up and down when he jumped. Exactly. <laughs> Have his wife bite the head off him after they have sex. <laughs> but love David, it, David was one of the nicest guys you could ever meet, ever. too. Oh, oh fast. yeah. And, fast. and very, very yeah, fast. He was, he was like 6'6". Six, six. He was a big dude, man. Yeah. I used to raise him at Braddock. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That was his home track, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Him, Chris Williams. And we had a pretty, absolutely. pretty good little, a good little group. Yeah. That's a good. There, there's some fast dudes right there, JV. Frankie yeah. Perino. <laughs> Frank, yeah, he was. He was Frank. Franco was a uh, younger Even though. Franco, yeah, yeah he, I think he was a little, just a little bit younger. I I remember Chris Williams sang the national anthem. Oh, hold on, so let me back that up. Chris Williams, <laughs> I don't know about singing is not the right the word. <laughs> Chris Williams mouthed the words really loud in a in a gargly voice. No, he, he sang the national anthem at the Howard County BMX National. And man, it was, he's got some guts. <laughs> <laughs> got, some guys, got some guts, man. Got some that guts. guy was fast and he could jump and he could jump. Yeah. Yeah. And he was, he was, he was always very good. And and you got, you had a tough class, James. Man. Absolutely tough class. Hey, how, I remember how are racing. we supposed to teach kids how to jump? At a track that had no, <laughs> no jumps, jump jumps. No. they were they were inverted, yeah. inverted jumps. They were all big rollers. Big exactly. rollers. You remember the the supposed set of doubles coming out of that second turn? You could bunny hop them. Literally, if you went just like you just bunny hop over them. That's how small they were. God, I got a good gate. We could practice starts. Well, we could practice starts every night. It was awesome, man. That was that was some of the things I remember most. Yeah. Doing starts with Eddie and, and Mike and that was tough. Business, guys. Man. I tell I tell everyone, man, practicing starts at Woodward at night was the world championships at 5 p.m. Every, every time. Day. Every right. time. I mean absolutely. And you'd race all the way down to the first jump, and then you'd then you'd have to pedal up the uphill <laughs> second straight away. Exactly. And, and Eddie King would never ever give in he would take an extra pedal no matter what he did not want to lose even in practice without a doubt he it was awesome it was great times great could you times. imagine in today's world any of those kids dealing with an uphill section of a track oh my god would they just lose their mind clipping? yeah they, no doubt about it greg i i mean i went i my kids raced bmx for a few oh. years probably oh Oh boy! It's, you got to believe this. It's Eddie King calling. Nice. <laughs> Put him on. See, it was he heard Eddie King calling. I just, yep. His ears no, are I, ringing. He's my out. kids, my kids raced for a couple of years, uh, BMX, and and I was just blown away at how, um, yeah, I, I don't want to say soft. It's it's not soft. It's just a it's a different era, right? Like, Absolutely. um, but yeah, like if it rained. You, the kids would freak out they would like yeah. they would be freaked out on the course the track they were not sure if they were even going to race and i <laughs> i remember looking around and talking to my wife who also grew up around bmx and i'm thinking what in the hell is this what do you mean they're not going to race like why would they not race it's the craziest man i mean it, it's just it's a different era and um the kids and the sport is evolved in in a crazy way and they're they're so talented but yeah man i mean i would i would love to see some type of a uh vintage course morphed into the new school that they have now maybe a couple of different flatter turns that that they can't carry speed that they actually i mean you could write brakeless that those guys those guys now could race brakeless they they barely have to use their brakes i mean sometimes they get cut off but like 
the way the pack goes, it's like, it's like Daytona 500 NASCAR, you know, it's like, you don't do anything to shut any speed down. So there's no right. passing on the inside going into turns is almost non-existent unless they, they can carry speed out. Cause you just five guys go by you. It's cra- It's just such a different game. I went out yeah, for the sure, first it looks time like it. And, and rode a BMX track in seven years. I actually went out to my local track about three weeks ago and, and rode three nights in a row, not clipped in. I've never yep. clipped in. And it was infuriated. I was infuriated at how bad I was. And I was like, okay, <laughs> so so I'm gonna try and pick up. You know, I thought, okay, I'm gonna try and pick up over this jump, like like these guys do, like roll up the first one and then manual across and, and go down. The second I hit the top, I backflip so hard <laughs> and slap my feet down. You know, I could, but I didn't blow my knee out. I, I, I literally started laughing. So, wow, my knee didn't blow out. <laughs> and I looked, okay, time to go home. And I wrapped it off. I was like, I mean, I've rode, but I've, I've never rode flipped in. I've never rode one. I mean, seriously, though, that's true. They, they, these guys are they're so talented on that. But they've never had an uphill in the middle of the track. They've or, never or had an uphill on the track. In the of the track. None. Had the track, be, had the track be so loose that, you you know, you got to start turning. It doesn't or exist. Or, it's, or, it's, or it just off. rained. Like, like right. Eric said, it just rained, you know. Slick yeah. turns. It's what just, about a water yeah, the, the gate? Yeah. The, the gate is so slick, your wheels would just spin, you know? just it's just all been complete i it's all been kind of i don't want to say watered down but it's all been so templated it's just it's a template that they right. that they go from right like i mean i can remember showing up to nationals and the one of the most exciting things was to be able to go look at the track right like that was a that was a big thing right because you never knew what you were going to get especially right. when aba when they start throwing x doubles and z's doubles oh, in yeah. and all kinds of crazy shit and oh, triple doubles session. yeah i the mean like, hills yeah you <laughs> exactly you didn't right. know what you were gonna get like dude these guys now man like they they literally they could they the rollers and the rhythm sections are the same the berms are all shaped the same it's 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 a template so they all go and they you know um you these guys they can get a warm-up and they can do warm-up gates because uh, some of the nationals they actually have a, a gate that's there and they can do warm up gates. They don't even, they literally could get away with not practicing and just get on the track and be able to do it first run um, pretty close to, to max speed. Do they, they don't, it doesn't seem like when I watch them, they pedal as much as right. You know, right. It's, I mean, they go fast, yeah. but it's, it doesn't it's, seem like it's, they're pedaling as much. The, yeah. It's JV. The speed is, the speed is phenomenal. Like yeah. the, the amount of speed that they carry, right? Like the, their tires are, they 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 don't have, they don't have knobbies on them they're like slicks and then so and then the the course is super hard packed and then none of the jumps like when we were growing up and when we were racing the jumps had really tight transitions at the bottom so you would hit them and they would kind of kick you and and they would slow your speed down and you had to be able to navigate through that stuff and everything now is all super rounded off and super smooth so there's you know, it's still slower for the riders that aren't super talented, but the fast riders, they can manipulate their bikes over and around and through stuff. And the amount of speed they generate off of every obstacle, it's, it's, it's actually amazing to watch them ride and see how talented they are, but it's definitely created a different type of racing where you, you know, like we, we had bump and run racing a lot. Right. And that was part of the, that was part of it. Right. You come in there and you bump somebody and you disrupt their flow. And then, you know, you guys both get on your pedals as fast as you can and you race into the next obstacle in the next turn. It's, it does, it's not like that. You can't bump and run because five guys literally just go and they blow by you. Like you're on jack stands. You're, you're done. You can't. It's a lot different when you're not racing with, with a guy leaning on you all the way down the straightaway, <laughs> another guy ramming your chain wheel with his front wheel, right, and a and a big fat guy holding a beer, watering the turn as you're going, right, right. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> watering yeah. your front wheel on the turn, yeah, and you know a dismantled hay bale scattered all over the turn. Yeah, it's we've, a lot different now. <laughs> well, we've, uh, I mean, Mike and I went to uh, Grands a couple of years ago, and then I went to Grands last year, and it was, it was, I mean, we were watching it, and we were blown away at, A, how talented the writers were, just in general. Yeah, like, I, I agree. Like, 
I mean, I there's it, 10 and 11 X kids now that would arguably they could be, if, if you put a, you know, an old school pro on that track on an old school bike, that 10 or 11 X could possibly like, there's a kid when we were watching Hollywood, his name was Sean day. And that kid was flying. And I, I was like, dude, that guy could race pro, you know, <laughs> if you, yeah. So, but yeah. what I noticed also was like, if there was a crash in the first turn, they'd stop the race. And then the, the guy would sweep the whole first turn out. And, you know, like you guys remember when we would have nationals and by the end of the weekend, man, pedals and handlebars digging into the ground would create these big bomb <laughs> holes all through the corner. Right. And you had to navigate those dude, these guys, they sweep and then they scoop dirt and they patch it and they, they actually patch the holes so that the, the course maintains its continuity. Well, no. I've said it, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Those guys that are racing now, the, the pros that race now are true athletes. Not yeah. like, you know, they are, you don't see guys, you know, smoking <laughs> in the pits. Dude, look at them. They're like bought. <laughs> their, their uniforms are like skin yeah. tight. Yeah. I mean, they monitor their sleep. They monitor what they eat. They're not going to, they're not, you know, going to, to the, shakies after the races <laughs> ordering from joe all, all you can eat the all you can eat pizza and mojos no yeah exactly they're not doing the todd corbett and getting crackers and ketchup and hot water no no, no. no eric i went to your hall of fame induction and i remember you know watching those guys from that olympic you know that olympic track there at chula vista i yeah. mean i remember i was standing at the top of the hill and I was standing next to Toby and Eric Roop, and I was like, you know, based on how Eric still race, I go, Eric, have you ever raced? Goes, yeah, he's like, it's, he goes, no, you're he's like, you know, if you just, if you just worked up to jump and he goes, fine, he goes, knowing that you're this whole track, am I just spitting out again? But no, you're okay. Can you hear me? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, it's like as soon as he starts i know you guys, you guys no i was just talking to both of them they were just they were just like it was just me and me and <laughs> it kind of looks like aoc right there anything <laughs> bueller bueller we hear you. yeah we, we got, got you. you we got we you. got you aoc <laughs> well now we now we don't oh, <laughs> nearsighted <laughs> no, anyway, my point was is it was so gnarly. Dude, seriously? Yeah, well, keep going. You're good. Look, Let's... look, seriously though, that you're right. I remember going to the going to the uh, Hall of Fame thing and looking at that track and I remember telling Amazing. Mike, it's cr crazy looking. The starting hill alone and then you got that giant doubles like right on the bottom of it. You got I mean, Yeah, I mean, you guys It was the same for me and you have to remember like I wasn't I wasn't far removed when I got inducted. I wasn't far removed from, from still riding. Racing, yeah, I was still yeah. riding at a high level. Yeah. Not BMX, but I was riding mountain bikes and right. there were big jumps and there were big things on courses that we were racing as mountain bikes. And I remember, I remember going to the, 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 the early and watching the, the Olympic qualifiers and thinking, I mean, I was talking with my wife and I was like, I know when I was a little kid, we always wanted to have bigger jumps. I said, I can't, I can't, um, I have trouble. I'm having trouble visualizing being able to do all this. Like, and that's how I always try to process stuff. It's like, even like BMX freestyle and dirt jumping. Like there was a time where I was like, I could still visualize, you know, a backflip or certain things. And then it started turning into gymnastics and I lost, right. like, I lost the ability to visualize how it would feel or what it would look like. And, and for that, for that same thing, you know, when I watched the Olympic qualifiers, I was like, holy moly man these guys are going so fast and the consequences are so big um with the way that the course was built i mean we a long time ago we did this trip out to dave cullen and had some property out in the desert and his dad had a bunch of tractors and we did this road trip out there and we, he built these big old jumps and we all basically peer pressured each other into jumping them nobody really wanted to jump them but we did for this photo shoot wendy was out there Cork was out there yeah coley was an amazing one of the most talented great jumper jesus oh unbelievable great, great rider 
Yeah. Oh, totally. But I, but I mean, I remember thinking when I was leaving there, like, gosh, man, if we ever have to race on stuff like that, that's going to be scary. That stuff was nothing compared to what the Olympic kids ride. And now you see like, you know, like you see the, the girls are doing that stuff and you see like there's younger kids. Now they're having these young training camps to develop these Olympic hopefuls. And there's these young kids and they're, they're jumping all that stuff. And you just like, I mean, it makes you feel old, man. You just look at it and go, gosh, man, but they're so talented. The kids are so, so talented. And, um, I do, I do. The part of me wishes that there was, like I said, a little bit of a morph between, you know, throw in a couple of flatter turns and let's see if the riders can negotiate through there and it would create some weird and dynamic passing. I'd love to see a little bit of that, but, um, I also am in complete admiration for the skill and, uh, talent and the athletes that they are. Like you said, Mike, these guys are like, man, they're specimens, dude. They're, they're like, they're explosive power and how, how well, Greg, you wrote a new track, right? And so right. going just, trying to pump through a rhythm section by the end of the rhythm section, your legs don't even work. Oh, it, it, I was, I've done it. when I go by there and, and just walk, I mean, there is a 10 year old over there that wouldn't just absolutely me. Even yeah. if I clipped it. Totally. I, now, I close let me, let me, out again? Yeah. You're freezing up a little. I think we got I'm, we if, got a little bit. My right. connection bad. No, now, I get yeah, it, dude. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, Eric, you could ride. You were a good technical rider. You weren't like a Sean Texas or anything like that, a guy, or an Anthony Sewell, or you. You were very skilled. And hey, don't in fact, now, 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 but and Mike, <laughs> of course, you were very could jump well. Everything. If they would have had tracks even half as of what they are now, we would have ruled. We were all good technical riders versus big holes yeah. you know I yeah, mean, no. honestly it, it whenever there was technical tracks I, I greg and i we talk about this all the time we seem to do a lot better than you know uh, love tommy brackens uh, he, he could handle technical tracks too sean texas couldn't but yeah there, there were several riders that could ride technical tracks better than others That's absolutely yeah. and and sure. having the track like today even half of that back in the day it makes big difference I world my, cup Mike yeah my favorite my favorite was Louisville I always loved Louisville because yeah it required both right like if you were a powerful rider you know the gate was pretty flat and the start hill was a decent size but it always seemed like you really had to lay down a lot of horsepower down that first straightaway to get to that first turn and then but once you got through the first turn man it was like you dropped in on the roller coaster and you had all that speed right and so now you're now you have all that speed, you're carrying all that speed into some of those big features and some of those things would come up fast and, you know, the step ups and tables and the way those things are, the way they positioned them and then going into the last turn and then that last straightaway with that rhythm section. So, I mean, I, in my class, sometimes I raced guys that were stronger than me and they would beat me down the first straightaway. I just couldn't beat them down the first straightaway. They were, they were just faster, but but your skills, I, I yeah. just would buy my time. I was like, man, I just got to stay in touch, dude. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get him in the last straightaway. And I made so many passes down the last straightaway because of that. But I really liked that track because it gave everybody a shot. It was a balanced. I, I thought it was one of the most balanced tracks. South park was the same way, man, because South yeah. park's first straight was so flat. Right. And so you'd get these horsepower guys would get out front, man. And then they turn and go down the second and third straightaway, man. And those big old jumps, dude, you'd see all those guys dead sailor <laughs> and that shit. And the skill riders would start coming through the pack, man. And it, it made for, um, I always loved uh, growing up in SoCal. I never got to experience that until I got factory sponsored and was able to go back East and race that. And then I felt, I completely fell in love with racing back East, man. Cause the tracks were, so awesome dude i loved it yeah south park especially that that first year they had that triple jump yeah i made up so much time jumping over those hay bells i mean inside like, baby yeah just inside <laughs> more. you know and those guys are like even back then they, they weren't even you know jumping one and rolling they were rolling all three you just jump over them literally yeah. just go right by on the inside it was beautiful it was like well, great yeah. And a lot of those guys would, they, they didn't know they, they couldn't turn and jump at the same time. Right. So they would jump up 
<laughs> and land and then go, okay, now I got to turn my bike. <laughs> so, if you, you know, if you had any of that skill that you just, I'm going to line that lip up, but I'm just going to carve off the face and go to the right, man. He just, Maybe just cross up a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Man. Yeah, <laughs> I had a couple of guys in my class. It was the same thing, man. I was like, all right, I'm not going to try to pass them down that straight away. I'll just wait till we get to the triple. <laughs> it, it is, and, it and is. Even, that, even, even heading up to that triple was uphill. Remember yeah. that? It had a yeah, slight it was. uphill to it. Yeah, it I mean, was. It was I, I enjoy watching good riders that can jump, but I'll tell you, I get even more enjoyment out of watching people that can't jump. <laughs> oh, man. That's the entertainment, man, watching people that absolutely struggle with jumping. And uh, JV and I were witness to one of the scariest moments on a BMX bike. You remember JV? Oh, yeah. That, that would be in Jersey at the place we call the Bowl, which um, was like a little in the woods, little track that, you know, locals used to. It wasn't anything, really. There was like, it was a big kind of like hole in the ground that we would jump like a almost like a half pipe type of thing. And, uh, and a lot of the locals would go there and just ride. So um, I, yeah, I, would describe it. It, I would describe it as if you had a shot, a, a, a pool, a swimming pool, a high school size swimming pool that was shallow all the way around <laughs> dug out in the middle of the forest. <laughs> and so you, you, you rode at it, you dropped down, you went across and you jumped out. And they called it the 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 pit, the bowl, the, bowl, the what was it called? The bowl, the, the bowl. bowl, the bowl. Yeah, and and I could nice. not believe, you know, that was the place to ride. Where you know, in Southern California, we had all these jump areas. Oh yeah, great. Oh, it's absolutely. Not even, this isn't even close, no, but it was the it was, only thing. So everybody's and people like, the bowl. drove from all over wow. to come there. Really? Yeah, and and one <laughs> and it was day, shitty. One yep. day, Kenny Amen. <laughs> Oh, oh God! Kenny Amon, Factory Mongoose rider you number bet. one. Uh, yeah. He drove down from Poughkeepsie, yeah. to New York, <laughs> in his vet. He was always telling us. He oh, told us for a year, for a year at the track he was bragging. Yeah, I got a vet, man. I got a new vet. Yeah, yeah, I'm driving a vet now. And he showed up at the bowl, pulled up a Chevette. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I love oh, it. Nice. JV, go on with what happened. He, he didn't come alone. He came with Wayne McFarquhar. Oh, there you go. Uh, Wayne McFarquhar. Uh, Wayne McFarquhar. And uh, uh, absolutely. I, I know. I already know where this is from. <laughs> McFarquhar. <laughs> so, so um, you know, there's not Throwing a lot of his two, his two teammates in that. Shackle and <laughs> and Dave Deschet. Deschet. Yeah. <laughs> Dollar Dave. Dollar Dave. <laughs> So, oh so there's no, so there's no jump, really big jumps back there. And, and Mike, you know, I think we, I don't know if he picked up a shovel or what, but we ended up making like a jump in the back, but you had to come down the, through the woods, through the trees, the straight downhill. And then Mike built this kind of lip and he would, you would just, there's no let, there wasn't even a landing. Like there's no backside of it. You just go like in and land flat. And, you know, Mike, makes us all do it obviously he he, uh, he guilts us into like come on you can do it go go Never. we all we all go and wayne mcfarquhar is the last guy up there and we're like oh shit and <laughs> what's so, gonna what's gonna happen here <laughs> so we're starting we're all starting like maybe 40 50 yards back from the jump and that's pl i mean you you couldn't go too fast because you would just launch into nowhere and and Wayne McFarland, we're all going. We look back up the hill, He's and in Wayne's Albany. like hundred yards back. <laughs> <laughs> and you know when he goes by us, we're we're like I said, fifty yards back. When he goes by us, you know everyone's shirts shaking, and, <laughs> and he goes by so fast. <laughs> and I remember before he hit the jump, I looked at James, and James looked at me, and we're like, <gasps> Yeah, we were scared. We were scared. And he launched. He launched. And he did the dead sailor to the side. <laughs> he, uh. landed, he landed crooked, but did the swerve matic and pulled oh. it off. I'm sure it bent his frame from landing so crooked. But he Survived. pulled it off. He didn't crash. And I, that was this, one of the scariest moments I've ever seen on a BMX bike. 
Wayne's a big dude too. Yeah. 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 He's a tall guy. Wow. He did all right. He did all right, the guy. No, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. Absolutely. Good, he was a great career. writer. You bet. Polar opposite of, of John Shackle. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> John Shackle was, you know, five two and <gasps> man, okay. built like a fire plug. Remember we were talking about that Silver Dome race? Remember how yeah. they had the section where Harry ended up the cover doing his his, his lady? Yeah. Shackle would get off his bike and run through that. It was literally just a step jump. He would, he did. He thought it was faster. Shackle yeah. would he would he would get off his bike and run through it. Oh like, my god. You talk gosh. about the skill of today's riders. Like, every single guy in that main's jumping a 40 or 50 foot gap, right? Just like it's nothing. And he yeah. got off his bike and ran through there. I was like, guys, a pro. He was, a, he was ahead of his time. <laughs> he was cyclocross. And if you're walking, <laughs> I'm not buckling on, but it's hey, uh, he did though. You're right, race? Greg. Who ended up winning yeah, that? I race? watched him. Uh, Greg did. I got. I had the out, <laughs> just like just like the NBL Grands. I had the outside. You yeah. had the inside. Okay, but God bless him. And you you get the start. You win. Peace. <laughs> yeah. Rest re in peace, Matt Harris. But Matt Harris, his resume for the Hall of Fame, that he won that race. No, you won, and I think I and got I second. And I was like, so. but but I did. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> how do you put it down if you didn't? Like, of course. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. Well, I'm just, okay. I'm, you know, this is why people think I'm a dick. Because <laughs> you call out dead people on their resume. <laughs> God bless him, man. Matt, Matt was, Matt was a great writer too. Incredible writer. Oh yeah. Oh, for, Matt, for his, I'm, for his I size. God, I love incredible. Matt. Yeah. Matt was an incredible athlete. And yeah. I, I love the time Joe and I raced with him. I love him. I don't, I don't know why I just said that. I take it all back. He was not uh, afraid Matt, of anything. Won. No, but he was not afraid of absolutely anything. Or anyone. No fear of anybody, anything. Absolutely. Yeah. And he I remember, I remember, confident. I mean, I thought he was, uh, he was not very friendly at all at, at the races. I mean, and if you were in his moto or even next to him in practice, he was not chit chatty. He was not. And then. He'd be a smart ass to you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then uh and then when he came to Woodward and he would got in front of campers, he was the kindest, yeah, greatest. I mean, all he cared about was no, he could counsel kids, he could he was awesome with kids, man. He was just a phenomenal guy, just out, out away from the track, away from the races, I should say away from the starting gate. He was a great guy. I mean, he was yeah. just had a he just put on his game face, man. He was super confident. I, it was worse than Greg Hill. <laughs> wow. And I'm just joking. Greg Hill is one of the best ever, man. Hey, but see, no, but Matt, Matt was very confident and he wasn't afraid of anything. I had a, I have a Greg Hill story about Braddock. Um, it was a, it was a rivalry between myself and Greg at that point. Um, New All Friday. nationals. Yep, and uh, at CW and GT were battling for Team Trophy that day. And I found out from Greg and then later from Rich Long, I asked him to, to, uh, to really tell me the truth about what happened. I remember being in the lead in Pro Open in the first turn and Greg absolutely T-boned me and shoved me right over into that chain link fence and wiped me out. And there was no way he could have pulled it off and won the race. He just came in and wiped me out and took us both out. And uh, I learned later on from Greg that Rich Long had given him, told him, "I'll give you five hundred dollars if you wipe him out." I'm, 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 and, I'm, I'm sorry he did, but I got third in that in that main, so I was kind of happy. So. I, uh, I, and later on, now after I quit racing, and I, I took to Stewart out. I, I sent Stewart over the turn too. So <laughs> I asked Rich Long about that when I went to work for him afterwards, and uh, he said, "Yeah, yep, I did that. <laughs> yep, I did that." No kidding. Yeah. It's a different time. It's a different <laughs> time. Yeah, I mean, front wheel to the chain wheel, quack. But it was, yeah, it's racing. That's racing. racing. You know, I I, uh, I I talked to Greg uh, a few years ago, and we were laughing about the the no respect thing and the uh, and the little rivalry we had. And he said, "Hey, it was just part of racing." I was like, 
man, I, I, I carry nothing with that. It was great. Yeah. I loved it. I loved it. I kept it in inter- I, I I thought it kept it super, super interesting, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, like that there was rivalries like that. And there was, I mean, I, I gotta, I gotta believe there's things like that are, that are going on now with, with the modern writers. There's still those rivalries. I mean, I don't, I don't see as aggressive writing, but I'm sure that there's those rivalries, but man, that's, that's what gets you up in the morning. I mean, the they mod- had those, they, now they have the lanes painted down the strip first, you know, to, to down stay in right away. Yeah. And so yeah. you don't see, you don't see the, the kind of things we used to see where, if your rival was next to you and you got a better start, it, I mean, if, even if the turn went right, you took off left and just cut that. Oh, off. The Malachi crunch. That, that between Scott yes. Clark and Harry Leary, they, they cost me 10 nationals. I mean, Harry, Harry must've put me over a berm minimum 10 times, 10 wins. I mean, he had no, he didn't care. Just Clark 10. didn't care. Toby. Just 10. Yeah. I <laughs> seems like more. You know, Harry, I'm I think Harry went on to do that to guys in the 90s and the 2000s. He's still doing it, I think. Still, still doing, doing it right now. <laughs> still doing it. Ten-year-olds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ten-year-olds. He's taking off. Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, Friends man, I, 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 I just want to say one more thing, and that is, uh, it's weird to be friends with him not because I hated him so much then, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just racing, though. Just like yeah. Mike said, it's just racing. It's and right. That's all it is. And, and uh, to sit around and talk with those guys now is a blast, even though, you know, they are they're they were competitive then, and, like, Harry's still competitive now. Oh, but absolutely. To, to, to talk to him now, it's, it's like talking to him back then. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he's much nicer. He's you know he's happy, but when you talk about racing, dude, he's dead he's serious. Dead wow, serious. he's dead serious. Yeah, man, it's, I, it's I, nuts. I think it's great. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure there are rivalries now. I'm sure there are. We're just not up to them. But they can't possibly. I mean, do they fist fight at the track anymore? Exactly. No, I. I yeah, crazy Ronnie and I know. Pete. Yeah. How many nationals did you see? Where, I mean, the the first turn in a pro main was a, a giant crash. I mean, every other weekend, dude. How about the last turn in a semi? Right, <laughs> oh. right, All right. Yeah, the if you were in fourth, right. man, you you're you're going home bleeding. Sharp, dude. sharpen your elbows. <laughs> I yep. can tell you that one of the hardest times I ever got punched in the face was Hans Nissen. Oh yeah, Hans, you bet. Dude, I Iowa didn't, boy. I didn't know uh, that guy was uh, until after somebody told me they were like, dude, that guy goes and like he goes to bars and fights people for fun. That's what he does. Yeah. But we got into his Yeah, he was a tough dude. Yeah. He I didn't a, know that. You know what? He was a hell of a rider too. He was Incredible good, rider. man. He was very I, fast. We were teammates. I was a, I was on VDC when he was on VDC. So we were there, teammates. Yeah. But uh we were in um Gosh, it was like a an an I don't know uh, Austin maybe in Texas, and I had um I won the first main, second main, I was in second. He comes in and just crushes me, man, into the in the second turn, just blows me up, and I'm like, I'm sitting on really good points, man. He just ruined my day. So, uh, I pass him in the so we race pro open before the third main. I pass him. And as I'm, I, you know, I pass him and I do the crazy Ronnie thing and I wave at him as I pass him. And so <laughs> at the finish nice. line, man, he just drills me, boom, in the exact same spot that he drilled me before, man. It, it hurt, dude, so bad. So I turn around and I grab him and I shove, I just put my palm in his face and I just shove his face. And my arm wasn't even done extending and the left hook, doosh. <laughs> Oh wow! And dude, I had a knot on my jaw. <laughs> he was a big like, dude too for like four weeks. <laughs> and when when he hit me, the stars I saw, all I thought was like, "Oh shit!" And I just ran. I ran at him and I bear hugged him and I locked my hands and I held on to him and I was like, "I'm just gonna." And he just started hitting me on my back until they split it up. <laughs> I just held on, wow. dude. There was no way I was oh, fighting that smash. guy. Oh, dude, his left hook, it was so fast, so accurate. And dude, I mean, I had my helmet on and he got me perfect right on the jaw. And I swear I had a, I had a knot, dude. I believe it. He was, he was a good rider and he was big. He was another yeah. big dude. Yeah. He's a big, big guy, man. 
Yeah. Uh -huh. Midwestern. I sure would like to see something like that on television now at the Olympics. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know. Lots of it, man. <laughs> yeah, that would that would that would that would uh, definitely cause a stir. You you'd read about that on Instagram and Facebook the next day. Have Dude, Connor I Fields just just T bone somebody just <laughs> just straight up just T bone take someone out. I don't oh, know. Punched him. Greg and uh, you guys. I mean, I I me and Hollywood kind of raced in the same local tracks and I don't know how it was for, for you guys, Joe, JV and Greg, but like, dude, there was, there was fights every Friday night at the orange Y and I think <laughs> Norco Y was Thursday nights. Right. Correct. And dude, it was all the time. I mean, I, I was, I don't know, 10, 11. I probably fought once a month at my local track with really? the kids I raced. Oh yeah. Hey, yeah. and stuff would, stuff would happen on Thursday, and they would they would they would hold on to it till Friday. Friday, <laughs> till, exactly. Till yeah. They get to orange, and, and yeah. yeah. And I mean, and I'm not just talking about the racers. Parents, Parents. Yeah. oh, big time would just duke it out in the parking lot. Yeah, man, it was real, real deal. Can Pop I tell some you popcorn my and watch? I, I have a favorite remember, fight. A favorite fight story. <laughs> <laughs> was it the big fight at Orange Y? No, this oh. one is at, at Corona Norco Y in the second oh. turn. My there was goodness. a racer from Texas. His name was David Bindler. You guys probably don't know him, mm -mm, but know David Bindler was a, uh, and, the, and the second person was Roger Linder, which I'll talk about in a minute. But David Bindler was from Texas and he, he came and stayed at my house. He was, uh, he had a bad stammer. He was a stutterer. I mean, really, really bad. And, he, you know, he would call my house and my dad would answer and he'd say, is, mm, and my dad would say, hey, it's Bindler on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so uh, Roger Linder, who was kind of a tough guy, you know, tall, kind yeah. of a broad shouldered and a tough guy, you know, hung out with Redman. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Wow. I know exactly. <laughs> what you mean. Okay, you hung out with Mike Redman. Say no uh, more. Yeah. I, I totally like, know who right. He was like a skinny, skinny young redman. Yeah, exactly. Like same cut from the same mold, you know, like, hey man, I'll, I'll kick your ass. <laughs> yep. And so uh Bindler, I I forget who wrecked who, but they both crashed in the turn. Oh, I know. Linder took him out in the second turn, they both fall. And Bindler gets up and he looks at him and he takes his helmet off and he goes, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we all knew what he was going to say fuh, 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 fuh. and linder just cold cocked him right to his, right to his off. hey mother fuh, 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 fuh. And he, pow right, to the, right in his kisser and he goes down in a in a just a uh yard sale <laughs> it's one of the best fights i ever saw it was a one punch wonder but man it was great and oh, we didn't love it. we didn't have fights like that really every now and again like Tim Lilthorpe would fight Chris Hayden, another great local writer from Nebraska. They would get pissed at each other. But Greg, we didn't really, you know, you used to take me out all the time because I was beating you. And I never fought you <laughs> all the time. See, it always I, I comes back got, around. I wasn't one of those guys. I wasn't one of those guys. I was too small to take anybody out. I was literally 5'7 then. But I put Joe over the berm more than my fair share of times. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't understand why you guys bicker at each other now. Like, just be yeah, honest yeah. to God. Honest to God. I should have kicked your ass. I know. But <laughs> I should have. One time in Omaha was the quote Nebraska State Championships. Like, and, and we were pros. It was like there. I mean, we shouldn't have been even in the main event, the trophy dash for this, like the overall state winner. And Joe was winning. And just for fun, I put him over the berm. Just, <laughs> and I was, I was literally laughing so hard. This kid that was. This kid was passing me. Remember one of the studies, Joe? He was he was he was coming up next to me. I was laughing so hard I couldn't tell. I was looking back and Joe's off. And I, I should like, have thrown my bike at you because I was I on the last straight because you sent me over the turn. <laughs> oh shit, I'm laughing too hard. <laughs> I love that. They just that's BMX. I did. I it is. I I was four, hey, it four, is. Four main events at Springfield <laughs> at a national. He sent me over the same turn, four in a row. <laughs> oh wrecked, wrecked me twice. Oh, 
No, I, I know. No, a, I know no. another great Dude, next story. Are you out of your, your, I passed you so clean in two of those. You're out of your mind. All four. Over. Yeah, what? Call, call the cat lady. He knows. Uh, how about? I wanna, okay, I doubled both days. I doubled both days and be fairly, fairly. You know that. Don't give these guys. I was gonna say one of the best fights I ever saw was the very first time I met uh, knew of John Shackle, eighty-one World Championships at Indy, and I look over. And Shackle's dad is fighting yeah, yeah, a kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kid. And the kid's yeah. like, his, and I was like, like, like some dude in Shackle's moto must have like pushed him out wide or whatever. His and his dad, dad his there, dad came in and started one and down on him. Yeah. And the sister came over. To Happy. Like, I don't know how. But the other guys, dad came over, Kathy came over, and I just remember thinking, this is the most insane family I have ever seen in my life. But <laughs> that was the first thing. Like, that was a Tom. lot of testosterone <laughs> right there, man. I, and, I, and all I could think of was, wow, East Coasters, you know, New Yorkers. They're, yeah, I mean, exactly. I was from New York. Like, they yeah. were out of their minds. They were just, they were so angry. James is like, yeah, it's just another day. At yeah, it is. There yeah, were, it's I, another I would, I'm trying to think of if there were a lot of fights. I don't recall there being a lot of See, I, fights at, at yeah. Braddock. You know, I only got out to the Orange Y a couple of times in its heyday, you know, 82 to 85 for me. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I didn't get, you know, I just remembered the stories like these 15 year old locals are going to like blow me off. I was like, well, that ain't happening. <laughs> like, yeah, that was, I didn't. I a lot of good it, riders, I'm sure, though. Fights, but I wasn't going to let some 15x local beat me out there. I didn't care what anybody said. <laughs> that was that there. was when uh, it was uh, Billy Billy Griggs, Brian Gass, and Robbie Taft. Yeah, mm. Brian, those th man, those three dudes were fast. Oh, absolutely, they absolutely. Gate, they had that gate so wired. Oh yeah. man, and it was it was a tricky gate because it was super steep. Yeah, super steep into a, a semi flat. So it was a gnarly transition yeah i had that weird kink you had to get through yeah. that kink right pete and took me out there one time and starter big john they had him down too yeah pete had it down pete was you know pete was pete i mean he was gonna win <laughs> like dude do you guys remember a guy named dennis kishiyama yeah oh, you bet God, yeah absolutely dude how he was yeah. fast out of the gate at orange Y. do you remember mike yep and, and, and there and, and he was fast at three places. He was fast there. He was fast at Westminster. Yes. And he was, and he was fast at Greg Hill's starting gate. <laughs> and and I would tell you a funny story about Dennis Kishiyama, though. You could get in his head super easy. And he would he would stack dime. He he would loosen a stem, he put a stem and he'd stack dimes between his top of his headset and the bottom of the stem. That's how I knew how high to keep his stem. And we're at Greg's house and I, and I, I'm beating him out of the gate, beating him out of the gate. And I watch him, he goes over and he lowers his stem one dime, one dime. <laughs> high. No way. Dude, I thought you were going to lower never it. Let him down. Never let him down. And he used to run his bars way forward. Forward. Shy. Yeah. Yeah. In Chicago. Shy yeah. Down. Yeah. But he Dude, was you could yeah. spend an hour just talking about weird bike setups from that era. I, I mean, know, man. Eddie King, how about, I mean, you know, when EK, when you talk to him, ask him, he, he rode his bars like a motocross, like a motorcycle. I mean, they were, so, him and Sewell ran their bars. I was just going to say back. Anthony. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah, Anthony more than back. Eddie. but Yeah, but they leaning back. Yeah. Leaning yeah. back. I know, it's crazy, right? I mean, all the different weird, stupid geometry. I mean, if some of those bikes from, and the, you know, it's just like so, a perfect example, so, like that, that cross route design for me to ride was just the dumbest thing that's ever at the bottom. The crank hanger was lower than the chain. Stays. Dude, you know, and then it was just an ultimate I mean, we're just riding straight into the ground. The Jag bike. <laughs> what bike was that? Yeah, his Jag. It's Jag. How, uh, Greg, how about ever been built? How about you running about ten flex fighters, and your your stem was like eight uh, eight inches tall. Yeah. Do you know what I thought? You Red know what I always stem thought? with a full one inch. Go ahead, DC. I, what I always thought was I always thought it was crazy, man. Is when Pistol Pete was on CW, he designed that 
dude, his oh bike was God. like a damn recumbent. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, it, you're right. <laughs> his bottom bracket was so far in front of his seat. Absolutely. <laughs> and I, yeah. he, he made that thing go fast <laughs> as shit. But dude, he was so squirrely in the corners because when he'd sit down, there was no weight on the front end. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but then the craziest shit was he went to Haro and they made the same the stupid same, bike. Same similar. Yeah. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> and and that was before Electra had their. You had look their at it, it was like a county. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I all I think of was how smooth Pete was on Diamondback. And then when he did when he got on CW and got bigger, yeah. It was all of a sudden it was just his bike, everything changed. It was weird. Yep. I know. It was weird that he it was weird that he changed so fast. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything. I'm not saying anything. Conspiracy theorist will say. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! I, I I I'm not saying anything. There were some seriously stupid entries. Well, yes. uh, Stu Thompson riding on his red line on the stock red line. Dude, bars and seat like that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> because his frame was a mini. <laughs> the craziest <laughs> shit ever, dude. Big old dude. His seat and his bars look like that. I always, I'll never forget seeing that. Looking at him is like, what in the hell is that? <laughs> Poor guy. You know what that is? That's a salary. That's what. That's what it is. And he got the job done. He did. Yeah. He went yeah. fast absolutely. on that shit. Well, absolutely. absolutely. Flew it was on like that. Pistol Pete in his heyday. You could have put him on anything. It wouldn't have mattered. You True. bet. Yeah. Absolutely. Just strong, fast, and a good rider. Determined. Great combination. And determined. And determined. Yeah. So Stewart never had a custom bike. He always no. had stock. Straight up PL20. Man. Same thing. I was probably half his size. Same thing I was riding. Wow. But your, but your stem was this high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, Eight <laughs> flex fighters. Sano products. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't in for Guyby. I had well, Robbie. You, on the gate, on the starting gate, you were looking underneath your grips at the, at the light. <laughs> got his A-pangers. His A-pangers. Well, I, I liked my bars flat. So I used to take those red line bars and I'd stick them underneath the, the wheel of a rental car and bend them flat, right? So <laughs> they might not always been exactly correct. So it would, so at, uh, at Lancaster, you, you, were, you were at that race, Mikey, at, around that, that those, those doubles that went into that big downhill yep. section, my bar snapped off completely. I just ate shit, went over the bars. And like a good soldier, I got up and pretended the bar was not broken off and, went and tried to walk it back to the pits. And then I took a brand new pair that are all swept back and just bent them flat again. Oh, thought you would have raced them bent like that. No, no, they were, no, I mean, it snapped off. And no, I mean, the, the new pair, you could have Oh, them. no, that was Greg Hill. You ever sit on Greg Hill's bike? Yeah. Like his, his personal star bars. It was all, like they, they were chopper, like you were holding on like, like a lawnmower. I mean, they, they were bent <laughs> back so bad. It was the weirdest. I was like, how does he go this fast? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I sat on I sat on Sean Texas's bike once, and he ran his handlebars slightly turned to the side. Oh. Yeah, like, you know, off like six or seven degrees. And I was like. So did Beckering. Yeah. And, wow. they, and to Beckering, and to Beckering, they were straight. And I'd go, you are so high. I go, your bars are so fucking off. He, he, he might have been. <laughs> might have. Okay, but, but let's talk about the weird shit Miranda did when him and when him and Choo Choo started starting like cockeyed in the game on you. I've been late seven and eight. Yeah, yeah right. Next to I can tell you what he's saying. I know you exactly. can. I can. I know exactly what he's saying. I, I listen. There's science behind it. Oh, I want to yeah. hear it. I, let me hear the science. It's Mexican science. <laughs> <laughs> my, my dad told me. He said, "Hey, hijo." <laughs> no, I, I, seriously, there was some thought behind it. You know, to be able to. To uh to throw your weight not just forward, but to throw your weight with everything you got, and it was from boxing. You don't stand straight and hit somebody. You turn and you throw your all your weight into it. So yeah. that's where it came from. Yeah, dad, but you never, I never, I boxing. never knew. 
I my never dad knew that. I cared about the guy who was on your right. If no, you, were... you didn't. You, it, well, it didn't screw you up. No, I it came out straight, it, yeah, but it was absolutely. able to throw everything sideways. No, I it, didn't like didn't looking on those, tight, on those tight ABA gates. I did not like looking over at his bike six inches from me. I mean, right. it was bothersome. It didn't bug me one bit because yeah. you never came into my lane or, you know, no. you never. Well, otherwise... years, I, come, I would come into Grubs though on purpose. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Oh, man. Check out, check out this picture that I found. Hold on. I hope I could do it. Look at, does this explain yeah, Greg like 100%? Got, got... <laughs> wow. There it is. Yeah. How did I stand a chance against Sean, Texas or Stuart? No kidding. Yeah. Well, how about Eric Roop? Yeah. Honest to God, Eric Roop is a phenomenon. I mean, the yeah, kid he, was just pure skill. Absolutely. Yeah. Great, 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 great writer. Me and, me and Joe had this conversation. I swear to God, his 83 and 84 NBL number ones, I think for my era from 81 or 80 to 86 was the greatest accomplishment ever in that era, you know, up against Pete and Brian. Brent, Stewart, and Greg, Greg, Tommy, yeah, but Perry. He was, he was on Dr. steroids. He, Eric Krupp was on steroids. He just didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it's done at his height he, even used, like, he exactly. was taking the legal ones and they just did, you know they were, they were, they were robbie organic. was taller they were yeah they were organic they <laughs> gluten -free. organic steroids yeah. they weren't gluten-free yeah no it just didn't work no but those two nbl number ones back to back were seriously just for that era was amazing i thought wow and he's still uh, racing. Let yeah. me just say, let me just say this. It's uh what's amazing is after all these years, you guys are still just as entertaining. Oh. <laughs> after all these years, you still talk to each other and about each other the exact same way. It's awesome. And I, and I think I can I can talk for ECJV and myself. Dude, this has been awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I feel bad for putting Eric through it because James and Mike, you know exactly what it's like. I love it. Yes. <laughs> Dude, JB, I'm, I grew up, this guy molded me and mentored me. <laughs> I'm like, I, I guess I can understand that. It yeah, makes I'm sense. like, now exactly. I totally get it, man. I totally get it now. It's like, cause he's no, always, I get it. I Mike's get it always, because... no, go ahead. I was just going to say, Mike's always told me all these crazy, funny, phenomenal stories about you guys. And I'm like, gosh, man, I wish I had been there for all those times. Dude, now I totally get it, man. Why you guys had to come on together. Yep. Absolutely. It could be a lot worse. I, can Dude, I was, gonna, I was just going to say, we will get off this call and still do this. Absolutely. And, and, and we'll talk for three hours trying to figure it out. And it never gets it. figured out. That's yeah, BMX. Right? And I think I, I did. You, I knew. I think I did get divorced from my wife because of you, Greg, because of <laughs> these stories. I, I like, no one been... wants to hear this. Nobody <laughs> wants. <laughs> Just move on. See, I she remember was knowing podcast. that. She I was know that Eric was a, was was Mikey's guy at the when you inducted him into the Hall of Fame. I was like, well, of course he loves Miranda. Look at that. I knew yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> he totally corrupted me, man. Yeah. He absolutely and James and I love oh, him. Yeah. Yeah. James, yeah, James. James, is a little you, could, combination. you could have had your pick of those guys, and you picked Miranda. Jeez. <laughs> Hey, you guys oh, are li you guys are lifelong friends, and it's awesome. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I get jealous, jealous, and want to hook up and and definitely get together. I absolutely need to. Oh man, I would we'll be do down it. for that. Yeah, let me tell you, I miss you guys. It's uh, when we do that every once in a while, we'll do that group Talk texting. Us, and, I mean, it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, what really needs to happen is a Woodward reunion. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, we have to find somebody then. We could go uh, to Arizona and, and would, stay at, at Biff's house. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. James brings up a great point, and it's it's, a, it's the perfect point to end on, is that this podcast is not complete, because it will never be complete until we get Mike Polson. Absolutely. I, yeah, I, I, would, I would love, love so, to. Yeah. We are going to name. We're going to name this. We're going to name this podcast the Search for Mike Polson. And we'll Dude. collect. We'll get the GoFundMe for Greg and some bandwidth, and <laughs> we'll make sure that it all goes well from there. Hey, I I think 
I think if we find that Joker, I think it's a, I think it's a, that's a, yeah. I think that's a studio. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I'll just say this, why he's not in the hall of fame. I'll never know. He was an incredible writer. Absolutely, Absolutely. great. One of the best amateurs. And that includes you, Eric, yeah. uh, you know, Richie, there's a, yeah. just a handful of yeah. guys that I Mike think was, of a, and, he was one of the one guys. Of you are. Yeah. Mike was one of the guys I looked up to as well, man, as, a, as an upcoming amateur. I was just like his power, man. He was amazing, dude. How strong he was and just the way he was win his races. It was, it was awesome to watch, man. And one Andy of the guys Fisher. I aspired. Yeah. I'll, throw, I'll throw a double D in there. Doug Davis too. Was an excellent amateur too. Incredible. Yeah. Did you look up to him when he had that Mino helmet on? So. Dude. Yeah. I, you know, it, I was a little torn with those things, man, because some of the guys that I looked up to had those things. And I was like, I was at first I was Dude, like, you man, wore a crazy helmet too. Was I, know, I was that just was gonna, gonna get to the Mio helmets were the second ugliest helmet ever in BMX. I guess that if they styrofoam, pay enough, styrofoam cooler with a visor molded on. Do you, right, right. Do you guys, do you guys know? And I tell everybody, and they think it's the craziest shit. That helmet was an advantage. I because when I raced with that helmet, I swear to God, it picked up all the sound around me. I could hear. <laughs> everything and ev i knew where everybody was because i because it actually amplified all the sound i could hear the bikes behind me i could hear everything around me so dude the helmet was so uncomfortable it sucked yeah but like, it, and it also kept your head cooler yeah it kept, kept, it kept the cooler. gatorade cold dude your hair looked good and for sure it was <laughs> not. Cold. i do not know what certificate <laughs> that they said that it passed but it didn't pass shit there's no way igloo dude. Igloo. I was yeah. gonna say igloo. Yet, yet he's thinking of coming out with one. But I could hear everything. I knew exactly where everybody was, dude. I could so I could cut people off without having to look back. It was perfect. I loved it. That. I you were using the force, Luke. Oh, I wanted to paint that thing so bad though. They wouldn't let me. You, said, you could put your it. you could pin your chores up on the side, a little <laughs> pin board, you know. <laughs> We could, they literally told me you can't you can't paint it because it'll it'll melt it. There it oh, is. it was a sweet helmet. No, I remember. There it I, is. Yeah. And I tried, oh. I tried to paint. I, I still have one at my house and I tried to paint the inside of it to see if it would, and it actually melted the inside of the visor. Oh, right, 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 right. It literally right. started to melt the helmet. I was like, son of a bitch. We went we went to go see our friend Magoo, who uh Hair who man. has a uh motorcycle helmet company and Inside, inside his office, he had a couple of sample molds of interior hel helmet interiors. And I said, oh. <laughs> That's it. Wait, it went dark. It went dark. Oh. Hit it again. That's exactly <laughs> it. That's me, by the way, when I had a beard. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Did they sell any of those helmets? They you sold those things, dude. Until, the, until their factory burned down for the third time. Yeah. Oh. Wow. John Cruz had a great story about Mino helmets. When they came to him and, and the Pattersons, they said, we'll either pay you a hundred bucks a month or a percentage of the sales. And the Patterson brothers took a percentage and, and, and he goes, I took the hundred bucks and made 10 times as much money. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I didn't know you wore one of those. How, I mean, that's, I feel bad for you. I'm sorry. I do. I never wore a Mino. I never wore a Mino. No, no. I think Spanky did. Your old teammate wore one. I heard no, they were never. super comfortable. No, I and, and by the time we were at Woodward, you know, Polson had a bell helmet. He didn't have right. a Mino then. So uh, but I think, I think Dave though. Campbell had a Mino. I think he did. Yep. Spanky did. Spanky had one before he went on hyper. Oh. I can't remember. Maybe we were yeah, like JV and even JV racing or something. Yep. My teammate on CW, Andy Zirzo, had oh, one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I tried it on and it was super comfortable. Yeah, and I really? I looked, that and then I looked on the, on the side of his dad's window and saw it and I took it right off. <laughs> you <laughs> saw the reflection. The reflection. <laughs> Can't so, pick up uh, chicks with a helmet like this. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. Well, listen, you guys again. Uh, uh, it's been. I remember Zerza having. It's weird how you remember I had the helmets on them. I remember. Greg doesn't want to give up. No. 
Well, thanks for having us. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, this has been fantastic. Uh, Absolutely. Again, uh, you guys on are... my box. That was straight to Joe. <laughs> Did right. we really discuss anything good though? Like really? Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, we think we think that you did. We just didn't. <laughs> we didn't necessarily catch it. <laughs> I guarantee it was golden. Yeah. We just got to get an interpreter. Wait till you now. read the subtitles I put yeah, in. Right. You're going to be really in trouble after the break the Dude. subtitles. That's all right. <laughs> Do whatever you I just Make them say whatever you want. Don't care. Yep. <laughs> I'll get you in trouble again. I don't. Well, it's awesome. Eric, it's great to see you and catch up with you. James, miss yeah, you, buddy. Guys. Mike, uh, miss, miss you, man. I'll see Greg in a week, maybe this weekend. So I'm lucky. Just hope he doesn't uh, leave not you so somewhere. Lucky. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> He'll make right. me pay for lunch again. <laughs> that's right it's taking I'm you kidding. to the train station yeah right exactly bus, worst bus station bus station that's bus right station. going to the Absolutely. bus station first well, he'll take first he'll take me out you know in a, in a corner in a, then he'll in take car. you to the bus station yeah exactly. absolutely love you guys you, you're you're family to us and uh and and now you are officially dirty knobs that's awesome. right yeah a t-shirt or something a sticker some sort of yeah yes you put on your number plate Yep. I'm just all glad right, you can right. finally admit it. All those years of the do-gooder that everybody loved at the track. <laughs> Jesus, Mr. Bitter. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Bitter table for one. <laughs> Little Dude. cheese with your wine. Hey, look, you weren't going to fight. Gary loved Mike. Yeah. There was no way you were going to separate that. Yeah. Man love. Yeah. yeah. That was he like. He liked me, too. He, he, yeah. 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 You liked. Yeah. He liked. You bet. He just didn't like grubs. Didn't yeah. like grubs. <laughs> You, where's your jacket greg i think it was his shoes dude it was those smelly shoes yeah, exactly. uh, i feel like oh my god heart, that's I'm a really good guy <laughs> gary, gary's great people man and ed all of them somewhere in here i feel really good about a lot of stuff but i don't know it's like the grinch it's in there <laughs> i'll call it's your in, therapist for you it's in there. get, get it set up Oh man, this this is why we do the podcast. Absolutely, <laughs> exactly why we do it. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. <sighs> okay. Well, on that note, I gotta go walk the dog. <laughs> Right. AOC's got a campaign to hit a sort of a stop. GOC. Such a dick. All right. <laughs> oh, easy, easy, easy. Look that, at you. That dial up is almost finished. <laughs> You've got mail. <laughs> I'm sorry, Grubber. Oh, I can't help it, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if one of my brothers got old, there he is, right there. What? I, 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 <laughs> fucking handsome brother. I am. I am Steve. I'm number 17. Put it on the tape. I should have put you over more turns. I regret. <laughs> God, how could you get more? Dude, I had more opportunities. It's <laughs> not, this isn't going to end. This is, he is chap. <laughs> Pre appreciate you guys. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, man. All oh. right, I'm going to sign off. Apple. All uh, right. Hey, hey guys. Good, you good, good, good chat. To... And thanks for having me. Thanks for having Eric, us. Eric, if you would have had the that's how you'd be. <laughs> yeah. Well, send me exactly the bell for any therapy said. you need. Yep. <laughs> exactly what Greg said. Who said word. that? Yep. All right. I'll get, I'll, get, I'll get with Greg in a bit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Love you guys. Love, Love you guys, you. too, man. All right. Bye. Hope, hope Bye. to see you all soon. Yeah, yeah hope so. I do. Yeah, let's do. Absolutely. All right, boys.
All right, sayonara. Yep. All right, bye, Good everybody. Good seeing you. Later. Back to you. Sasha uh, Fu. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that one, you bunch of dirty knobs. I'm going to send a box out to somebody who subscribes. So please do that. Subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Comment if you have anything to say. We'd love to hear it. And uh, we will be back out here in two weeks with another one. And thanks to our sponsors, speaking of which, we are going to read some commercials to you now. Thanks for uh, showing our sponsors the love because they're showing it to us. Thanks again, and uh, we'll catch up to you soon. Kenda, designed for your journey on the road, on the trail, or on the racetrack, you can count on Kenda quality. Our tires are engineered for performance and value across a wide range of interests and applications. See why Kenda is the right choice. It's your move. Imagine how bikes can lead to a healthier, more connected world. Bikes set us apart, free to explore and move, and experience our relationships with people and places like nothing else can. At Saris, we don't just imagine a more bikeable world. We're all in, making it happen. As our Sun Tour shares your passion of cycling, we are committed to giving you the highest level of service in the industry, along with products that hopefully will exceed your expectations. Serving riders is the cornerstone of our business, and we pride ourselves in doing it. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Velocity Bike Park is the premier bike park for riders in Southern California. With 25 miles of world-class trails, obstacles, flow track, and races for mountain biking, gravel, and BMX. ODI Grips, the world leader in grip technology. Home of the lock-on grip system. Check them out over at www.odigrips.com. Mega Design Group is a full-service marketing firm. They handle everything from logos to advertising to packaging. Having over 25 years' experience in the print and marketing fields, they can handle any hurdle. Check it out at megadesigngroup.com. Cool Stop Brake Pads. High performance bicycle brake pads since 1977. Check them out at coolstop.com. That's K O O L S T O P.com. Supercross BMX. What can we say? Our lives revolve around BMX. Founded in 1989 to build the ultimate BMX race frame, they've never strayed from that vision. Hey, for more details, Check it out at supercrossbmx.com. Amy Grips is dedicated to using all of its manufacturing strengths, including engineering, research, and development, to successfully prepare for future growth while demanding that the quality of its products provide consumers with complete satisfaction. Making Grips since 1974. Check them out at amegrips.com. If you have a Senna cycling helmet, you know what it's like to ride connected. Senna got their start in communications for the motorcycling industry, where they're now a leader. Senna brought their same tech that goes into those helmet-to-helmet -helmet motorcycle communication systems into cycling helmets. Senna bike helmets have an integrated microphone and two speakers hidden right into the shell. Senna helmets connect together on a mesh or Bluetooth network so you can talk to your friends while you ride without shouting over wind noise, even if you're not side by side. That's super cool, especially in the trails. Senna helmets also pair with smartphones, so you can listen to your playlist without blocking out ambient noise, and you can take phone calls and even hear turn-by-turn -turn GPS directions. Check out the podcasts that we listen to. These are our friends. We wouldn't be here without their help, so give them a check out. And finally, you know, keep it dirty. Keep it dirty.